So another short-term continuing resolution is what congressional leadership has decided here. Will you vote for it? Will it pass? Well, we haven't seen the text of the bills yet. The minibuses are an insult to the American people. We've just gotten back from over a week's uh, out of session, out of Washington, D.C. American people deserve better than this. You wouldn't run a peanut stand over how the Congress is trying to do the national budget. So I will look at it, but most likely I won't. None of the riders that we submitted from the Freedom Caucus were agreed to. Cuts in this city are, are non-existent, which is a sad day for America. The, the fact that we do everything to avoid a shutdown. Well, the government's going to avoid a, it's going to experience a national shutdown if we keep going with the debt that's accumulating uh, in America today. So we'll look at the text. Again, it's one crisis to the next. It doesn't have to be this way. And no business would do this. No family budget would, would, would operate like this. But we'll look at it. As you say, the two deadlines have been extended from you know, March 1 to the 8th and then the next tranche from 11th to the 22nd. We need to be up here working, trying to get together, have a meeting of the minds, but uh, it doesn't look like that's going to be possible. If it's not possible then, Congressman, just shut the peanut stand down? Absolutely. You don't operate out of fear. Uh, I mean, we know we can't continue like we're, we're going. I mean, I've heard numbers from the interest alone that's going to exceed the, uh, the national defense budget of $862 billion yearly. Um, but the, again, the American people deserve better than this. And if you're scared, uh, then if you're scared of a shutdown, then I guess we're just going to wait till the permanent shutdown occurs. But uh, we've got the only thing this administration has done, uh, I guess if you can call it right, is to give us things to cut. You know, the, the FBI building, the 87,000 IRS agents, you go down the list that we can offset funding items, and we're just not doing that. And it's a, uh, really, it's very frustrating for those of us who want to try to get this nation on a financial, firm financial footing, and it's not happening now. Kicking the can down the road is not going to work. It hasn't worked in the past, so it's not going to work now. So you say absolutely shut it down if necessary. The speaker, though, Mike Johnson, has made it pretty clear that he would not like to see the government shut down. Is he at risk as consequence of putting forward another continuing resolution? Would someone within the House Freedom Caucus, for example, move on a motion to vacate? Yeah, you know, I'm not going to go there. I mean, Mike is a good man. I support him for speaker. He's honest. He tells us the lay of the land. But at some point, we're going to have to face the reality that we can't keep running uh, from something that the Senate's not going to approve, the president is going to veto it. I get that. But the House is the House. We're in charge of the purse strings. And at some point, we're going to have to, to realize that what we submit needs to be a conservative number. The $1.59 trillion really has no, no recourse for paying interest. It's just kicking the can down the road, and the continuing resolutions and the minibuses are part of that, and it shouldn't be. So, uh, you know, we're going to, we, we're continually stressing the mic that under any uh, agreement ought to be firm metrics to stop the border hemorrhaging that's, that's occurring. And we can't keep going with let everybody from over 160 countries come into America, terrorists included. We don't know who's here. And that was the hill to die on, and I continue to back him up on that. That is the hill to die on, and any agreement on any of the 12 approach bills ought to have that rider. You control, you either stop the flow of the immigrants or we're at a standstill, and we'll continue to stress that with him. Congressman, this is all happening against the backdrop of a presidential campaign that's actually going to bring both Joe Biden and Donald Trump to the border uh, tomorrow. We're approaching... Super Tuesday, coming off the contest in your home state of South Carolina. Today, Republican presidential candidate Nikki Haley uh, talked about this. In fact, I want to bring it back to what she said in Charleston after losing her home state's primary over the weekend. We'll get you to reflect. Here she is. Today in South Carolina, we're getting around 40 percent of the vote. That's about what we got in New Hampshire, too. I'm going to count it. I know 40 percent is not 50 percent, but I also know 40 percent 
is not some tiny group. There are huge numbers of voters in our Republican primaries who are saying they want an alternative. I said earlier this week that no matter what happens in South Carolina, I would continue to run for president. I'm a woman of my word. So she's still in the race, Congressman, and you are the only member of Congress right now backing Nikki Haley. I know this is a hometown play for you, but you are now the face of the opposition to Donald Trump in Congress. Are you still comfortable with that? Look, competition is good. I don't care that I'm the only one. I knew that going into it. I don't put my finger in the air when I endorsed her back in February of 2023. Look, she had 2% rating, no money, and look where she beat 12 other candidates, and she's now one of two. Let's let the American people decide. And the only one that is going to decide, that's going to tell us when she is in or out, is Nikki Haley. The, the, she, got, she collected a million dollars after uh, the, the ballot uh, in South Carolina, which, you know, she didn't lose by 30 points. She lost by 20. I congratulate President Trump. But look, um, you know, what's going to change if Nikki gets out? She definitely couldn't win then. She will, as she said, she will go through, she went through Michigan, she'll go through Super Tuesday, and then she will evaluate it. But it's up to Nikki Haley to depend on what she does. And yes, uh, the election will still be November 5th of 2024. The, the, uh, the calendar of events will stay the same, and she will decide whether it's, it's worth continuing. She owes that to the people who have given her money. And the two things that normally happen when candidates get out of the race, one, the funding dries up, or two, the support dries up. And she's been very fortunate with that. And so, yes, I'm with her as long as she wants to be. This is not a negative to me. This is not a uh, something that you ought to, uh, you know, rush to. You get other people say, get her out. It's up to Nikki Haley whether what she wants to do. She's the one that's getting up from dawn to dusk, that's working that period of time. She's the one that's raising money. And we'll, we'll let it play out. Let the American people be the judge, not the pundits, not the media, not those who sure. say her political career is over. So, Congressman, you say you're with her so long as she's in this race. If she, say, gets out of the race after Super Tuesday, will you join the majority of your Republican colleagues in Congress and throw your support instead behind Donald Trump? 110 percent behind Donald Trump. I will call him, as I did before I endorsed uh, Nikki Haley, I respect the man. Look what he did the four years he was there. I will always be appreciative of what this man did, what Donald Trump did for the Supreme Court, uh, for conservative values, for securing the border. Uh, it's a train wreck, and I'll, I'll support him 100 percent, and I will call him uh, if, in, if Nikki gets out and, and say, whatever I can do in Congress, I will support him 110 percent.